Some of you might not know that I recovered from Hans dystonia that I had for a period of six years. I went through EMG tests and, by the way, that was the most painful experience in my life and I wouldn't recommend that to anyone, I really didn't know where I was going to. Uh, anyways, the tests showed that I would need to um, re-educate my brain-hands relationship because, well, my brain refused to control my hands muscles or, as I believe is better to say, my hands refused to play and to follow the brain commands. That time was very entertaining and a bit amusing. I got a few new skills I never knew I had before, like typing on the computer with the toes of my feet or pressing numbers on my iPhone with a pencil in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> though my handwriting skills went pretty low, um, I think close to a three years old kid. Anyways, um, I didn't take any treatment, nor I read much about it. All I knew is what my doctor said, which is the cause is stress and the focal dystonia is not curable as it's known so far. So, what I usually do in impossible situations? I do my own research. And as I look back, I think I simply love impossible situations as it always brings inspiration to me. Can't play piano well? Yay! Let's create my own system to finally play well. Can't move fingers at all? Oh, yay! Well, probably not yay that time because I was pretty low and lost. But uh, hey, anyways, let's find out what I can do because I have to play. There is no other way. And so, after my research and full recovery, I can now share with you some tips that should help you. I mean, why not? They help me. I'm not that different from anyone, I guess. Let's start off with the first thing people usually address to when one has hands dystonia, which is switching to totally new sensations while playing. Not using old ways of playing, old movements, even not touching on the repertoire, as it can all awake the memory of old sensations, and old sensations always trigger dystonia. So my dystonia decided to visit me when I was 99% done with my system, meaning um, by that time I already retaught myself how to make efficient movements while playing, how to, you know, breathe, internally sing, all that stuff. And I knew that hand dystonia cannot be caused by these new movements, because I already experienced how much it helped me and how much it freed my technique and my musicality. So, I mean, of course I was afraid, but I knew somehow that's not the reason. So, now why I'm saying 99% is because one little thing was still missing, and I believe that thing was a huge bridge to my old sensations. I believe that um, I was playing with relaxed hands, but I was not. And in my dream, um, I mentioned about it before, I was giving that new feeling of relaxed hands. And when I tried it out, I realized th that this last little step was a gigantic jump between all the new sensations. Uh, that's why I have made so many videos about this topic, uh, because I can't seem to stress it enough how much the real feeling of relaxed hands is different from what we used to think, from what we used to feel. Um, anyways, adding this last step to my system was the first step to my recovery, I believe. And I would want to stress here. You know, I'm not saying that you just need to relax your hands and that will be enough for your recovery. Um, you see, I already did my research and I already changed the way I played, my movements, my inner sensation and you know, so on. Um, all of this was done prior to my dystonia. All I needed is to add this last drop of new sensations of relaxed hands. And except that step, I never changed a thing in my movements, in my sensations, in my system. So if your movements are still not efficient or maybe even dangerous, you should really rethink the way you play. Now the next step. Um, well, let's don't go far away. If all sensation of playing trigger dystonia, then apparently all the music you play would also trigger it. I'll tell you guys. After my dystonia, I never touched my old repertoire. 
um, okay, there were a couple of pieces that I kind of played again, but it took me some time to really relearn them again. So I wouldn't recommend ever touch anything that you played uh, before your dystonia. Start with absolutely new repertoire, never come back to old pieces. Now, important, you need to start playing not only your old repertoire, but also classical music. For a while, for a while, not permanently, <laughs> don't panic. Um, somehow classical music um, in our ears awake all the tension, all the emotional pain we used to have practicing classical pieces for years, or maybe even decades. So forget about it, start playing something new, something where you can uh, find your own voice while playing it, something, start from fresh, you know, where you would have your beautiful message to say through music, not about pain, fear, struggle, suffer, but about light, love, freedom, ease, you know, just speak out that was always in your heart, about something beautiful that is in your heart, okay? Um, remember, your hands refused to play because they didn't want to speak about all the tension and pain anymore, so let them speak about love and beauty. Again, don't be afraid to start with playing Disney movie songs, New Age music, you know, film music, um, maybe Christian music. You know, as soon as your new sensation is solid enough, maybe after a year or so, you can shift back to playing classical music. Now, speaking about pain and despair, um, I heard somewhere, um, I don't know if it's true or not, but I mean, why not to try anyways? <laughs> um, I heard that suppressed anger would be stored in our arms. That kind of hit me so hard, you know, when I heard that. So I had a theory that uh, it could be because of not expressed, released, um, but yet the most powerful emotion that we have, anger. I mean, let's face it, can crush everything around without an ounce of fear. So um, when we keep this anger inside, uh, suppressing it, because it's not appropriate to be angry at people, because we are good fellows who are never angry, um, you know, the anger is not going away. Um, instead, it will be just suppressed deep in our nervous system, potentially damaging it. And um, anger energy would be stored in our body, in our hands, while we feel a vague, foggy um, irritation, dissatisfaction, slash, you know, frozen feeling um, in our daily practicing, or maybe even at the lessons with our teachers. So, when we experience a deep, traumatic emotion, energy, um, whether it's anger, grief, fear, despair, that we don't allow ourselves to feel, uh, that frozen energy can cause malfunction in our brain nerves. To sum up, try not to let people put you in a situation that brings stress, because stress always creates lots of anger. And if you can't really avoid stress, then take some time during a day to allow your anger, you know. It's my anger time. Make a room for an anger. Uh, let anger out. Uh, you can shout to your pillow. Look what I found on the internet. <laughs> you can cry out loud. Uh, you can simply even lie down and experience that powerful and burning energy without even moving. Just feel it, you know. Uh, now, guys, please, do not become bitter or mean to people, or crush everything around, literally. Uh, you don't have to do it to express anger. Just saying. <laughs> what would be this world without faith? Nothing. No inventions, no amazing discoveries, no technology, no arts, no music. Nothing. Faith is something that drives people to follow their intuition and dreams, even when they have nothing, when they're not even being close to their dreams. So, losing faith while having hands dystonia could be inevitable. You know, for someone it could take a month, for someone a decade, but it always comes. Um, I mean, playing piano is something that made our life meaningful, right? So, facing the fact that we might never play again uh, can bring anyone to the lowest point of despair. Uh, somehow I knew that if I'm not going to change the root of everything, my faith, my core beliefs, I would never recover. You know, 
by that time I almost um, I kind of I kind of give up by that time I felt I will never play again so the thing with faith you know you can never just switch the faith back on it takes time it takes your own experience and you should be really really help uh, thankful for all the experience you have that time um it takes lots of inner work with yourself and um i believe it also takes good people you know people with whom you can share safely um people who can help you and last but not least hands hygiene you know um when you're on the stage of recovery and then you feel your old symptoms you know your friend is knocking your door again you know don't panic you need to learn your body um for example learn that playing with cold hands is probably is not a good idea especially when you are uh, on that stage of recovery learn that healthy and strong hand muscles will help you play more effortless and let you play with relaxed hands building your stamina very true Learn that playing while you're stressed out or not feeling 100% well or tired or about to get sick, you know, basically when you're on the age of being um, exhausted, is also not a good idea for your hands' health. And I had it so many times, you know, when um, I don't even know that I'm about to get sick, but I would start having the symptoms. And then a couple of days later, I would realize that I was having a cold or something else. And then, you know, uh, having collecting this history, I started analyzing that, hey, I guess my hands just react. And basically, my hands know ahead of me that I'm getting sick. So uh, I started taking it much easier and really listen to my body. Um, learn that you can stop playing for a couple of days without freaking out <laughs> to let light symptoms, you know, just this little tingles or something, um, just to let it fade away completely, and then after a couple of days, come back to playing again with healthy hands. Uh, for me, that was probably the hardest thing to do because I was still trying to panic, no, I mean, not trying, I was still in a panic when uh, all symptoms would come back. And for me to stop playing even for two days, that was terrible because somehow, you know, I wanted to continue playing to make sure that the symptoms will go away. And of course they would not go away. And of course I would be even more in panic. So forget it, just, uh, keep calm take a break you know um, and when you come back it's all gonna be fine it's a simple hygiene routine that you should follow for some time uh, maybe half a year and of course not to expect your body to recover overnight so lastly i just want to say that on the stage of recovery there will be always waves you know up and down but eventually they will bring you to the shore of a um, healthy relationship between your brain and hands so um, everything will be fine <laughs>